Monsanto CEO Nathaniel Brown took to the stage today to praise Interpol and Tarvis Security Services for thwarting what could have been a major terror attack during his Safe Harbor Convention last week. Interpol has confirmed that a group of radical terrorists linked to the Augmented Rights Coalition wired the residential towers surrounding Apex Center with enough explosives to destroy two city blocks. As shocking as that fact turns out to be, Brown had only this controversial opinion to give. We must not make rash decisions based on fear, nor should we allow a vocal minority to dictate our future. The Human Restoration Act is a perversion of all the United Nations stands for. In time, I believe saner minds on the Security Council will prevail. Strong words from a man with an even stronger bank account. Let us see if his prediction proves true. This is Eliza Kostov. Hey, are you even listening to this? Live we won! From Pike. Did we? <laughs> we completely disrupted their plan. Marchenko, the orchid, the bombs. <sighs> You've been under too long, man. Time to come up for air. Take a breath. Janus messaged me last night, said Brown's been lobbying like a champ. He and the people you saved know the act isn't a solution. Picus will talk around it as long as they can, but that thing is finished. Janus always seems to have the inside track. Except when it really matters. What are you thinking? How many more plans do they have in motion? How many more soldiers like Marchenko are waiting for the call? <laughs> Don't call him a soldier. He was a thug, man. Soldiers have a code of honor. Honestly, I'm surprised you let him live. According to its creators, Rebia is a new way of living. A utopic beacon of light that is at the heart of the Santo Group's safe harbor initiative. The city, the first of its kind in the world, will be a haven for... Marchenko knows things. Put him in a cell and might convince him to talk. Put him in the morgue and we get nothing. Let's hope his bosses aren't as smart as you are. Regardless, we want the men behind him. Behind the Human Restoration Act. The ones still out there in the shadows. It's time for me to start pulling them into the light. Well, now we got names. Manderley and Page. The Collective won't stop until we bring these guys down. Yeah? Well, there's one more name I want to put a face to. Janus. So that's what you've been chewing on. Look, I'll try, Adam, but I already told you he doesn't like meetings that aren't on his terms. Then give him a choice. Either he sets up a meeting, face to face, or I find him myself. I think it's high time we met the man behind the mask, Alex. Don't you? Criminals may have achieved the impossible in Prague last week. A break-in at the most secure data archiving facility in the world. According to rumors circulating the internet, forensic computer experts were invited to examine the Palisade Property Bank's lava wall defenses after one of its account holders reported an unusual data retrieval delay. No word yet on which account holder filed the report, or what information, if any, was accessed. Palisade Bank Corporation owners released a statement earlier this evening, claiming that any rumors of a break-in at our highly secured facility are just that. Rumors. Between you and me, folks, I think they doth protest too much. A coroner's report released in Prague today offers shocking new insight into the death of Dr. Talis Rucker, former leader of the Augmented Rights Coalition. Apparently, the primary cause of the doctor's death was the exceedingly high level of alcohol found in his system. No other toxins were present, nor were there signs of any suspicious activity. Sources close to Rucker tell me he had been struggling with alcoholism ever since becoming a public figure. I am sure I do not need to remind you folks that the organization he founded, the Augmented Rights Coalition, has been linked to last week's horrifying terror attack in London. Augmented terrorist Viktor Marchenko, whom law enforcement officials describe as being instrumental in the planning and execution of devastating violence in London last week, is being moved to a secure facility for questioning. A long-standing member of the Augmented Rights Coalition, Marchenko has been very outspoken about his motives for the attack, claiming it was appropriate retribution for injustices suffered by the Augmented. I do not know about you folks, but there is only one question I really want the answer to right now. 
When will the United Nations pass the Human Restoration Act so that dangerous killers like Marchenko can no longer terrorize us? It seems not so long ago that Dr. Talis Rucker was on this very program, trying to convince all of us that his Augmented Rights Coalition was a non-violent organization. Today, of course, we are all a little bit wiser. It did not take long for ARC to reveal its true colors once Dr. Rucker was dead. Since last week's attack, the United Nations has officially labeled ARC a terrorist organization. As we speak, brave state police officers in the Czech Republic are raiding ARC-controlled compounds inside the Udalek complex. Here is an example of the defiance they are encountering. This... this is where you have it all wrong. Wrong! ARC was framed. You people, you don't see, you don't realize that Viktor Marchenko was not Ark. He was trying to kill Ark, kill the cause. But he has failed. We are strong, we are innocent, and we will not be used as pawns by rich, scared men who want to make us less than human. I am sorry, young man, but methinks thou doth protest too much. The Diwali criminal organization is under intense scrutiny this evening for their role in the London attack. Evidence uncovered by Interpol indicates that high-ranking members of the chapter in Prague supplied weapons and logistical support to ARC terrorists. Among those being sought for questioning is Otar Botkaveli, leader of the Diwali's Prague chapter. Sources close to Botkaveli tell me he has only recently assumed this role, and should not be held accountable for past mistakes. I do not know, folks. Is this really the face of a man we can trust? Join the online discussion and let us know what you think. News out of Paris today, where a sharp rise in illegal underground publications may have links to a prison escape recently orchestrated in Prague. Last week, Czech state police were holding members of the underground news group Samostat on charges of disturbing the peace, human trafficking, and media terrorism. The radicals escaped their holding cell, however, and are believed to have subsequently made their way deeper into Western Europe. Shortly after their escape, a radical publication called Silhouette began appearing throughout France. Has Samistat rebranded itself as Silhouette? I am sure you will agree with me on this one, folks. No matter what name these people go by, there is nothing more dangerous than the spread of false news. Turning our attention now to a more colorful story. A recent incident inside an illegal underground drug laboratory has led authorities to the heart of Prague's Neon operation. According to sources familiar with the new drug, the dangers of Neon had more to do with illegal distribution methods and criminal ties than with consuming the drug itself. Make no mistake, folks. Neon is illegal. And the dismantling of this laboratory is good news for everyone. However, some government officials have hinted to me that the drug may have therapeutic benefits, and if so, a government-approved version of Neon could be made available to the public eventually. Further testing will be required, of course, so only time will tell. <laughs>